Hmm. And then the big hum, the big hum. Oh, you got to hear the hum. Yeah. Man. So you can drive it as a modern car. It's not a problem. You want a driver? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Next exit. Look what he did to his mustache. <laughs> He's Hollywood type. He's Today I'm with comedian and lifelong car guy, Jay Leno. Jay, hello. so glad to have you here. Well, thank you. This, this is the operating theater here. This is... <laughs> well, doctor, what, what happened here? Well, this is pretty much what happens uh, with modern gasoline, actually. Um, you know, the old days, you, you could put uh, gasoline in a car. It might last a year or two years. Modern gas only lasts maybe three or four months. So if you have an old car and you're storing it... Don't leave that don't gas Don't leave... Use stabilizers or something. You know, I run this car... Well, I hadn't run it for about a month and a half. And what happened was I was driving it, it went fine, went fine. I went home uh, a couple of nights ago, turned the key, and at first I had thought, you know, I had a drip pan, and then I thought, oh, the drip pan came up and hit the fan, because it sounded like bang, 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 metal, metal, you know? Ooh. So then I realized, started to crank it, and I realized pss, pss, it sounded like, <laughs> you know, like a, like a, a plug was out. So it, yeah, it had to be a valve. So we pulled the head off, and what happened was a, uh, you can see here. Oh, yes. Intake valve seized in the guide. You know, this gas with this MB, whatever it is, and all this other stuff in it now, it gets gummy very quickly. Mm -hmm. What happens is an intake valve hung up, hit the piston, Didn't which then smashed it into mm. the cam and broke the cam. So if you can find gas stabilizers, please use them. Not a plugger, but like stable or something like that. It works pretty good because this is obviously going to be an expensive job. Yeah. Well, now, one of the things, I mean, you were, you were driving this because you drive almost all your cars. Well, not almost. Actually, all of them. <laughs> Somebody almost drive like I hit the wall, you mean? You know, you almost drove. Oh, oh that was you know, a pity. Until you came I'm to so that sorry. turn, oh. you were driving pretty good until you almost drove it. Well, no, let's, no. let's look at some of the other ones that you actually do drive. Not well, just almost drive, let's but go, do It's drive. prettier in here. There's no broken stuff. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Well, Jay, this is a nice grouping. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Several very nice pieces here. Bentley? That's a 1931 uh, eight liter Bentley. Uh, that's a big sedan. Uh, these are great. This was, I, I think, a far better car than the Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. The engine, this is all dead stock. Let's see what she is. Okay. Yeah, those were huge. Yeah. Big eight liter, six, four valve. No oh, head? No head, overhead cam. Um, Monster well, SU carburetors, those aren't the HD6. Those are some pretty big... Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the reason they had no head is people always go, that's in, well, in those days, head gasket technology is not sort of what it is now, and cars would often blow head gaskets. So you could say to a customer, you'll never blow a head gasket with this. You'll and, you know. and you couldn't argue with that. You couldn't argue with that. Uh, you, you know, when you look at a car like this, you realize uh, this comes from an era when labor was cheap mm -hmm. and technology was expensive. I mean... You have literally, uh, oh, hey, yeah. come on over here, you guys. When you look at how many little small little. nuts, you could pay a guy 45 cents an hour to sit there all day and twist a nut, but to come up with Something technology to would cost you a fortune. Now, technology doesn't cost you anything. But Labor's you got, expensive. Yeah, but you've got to pay a guy 60 bucks an hour with to health and welfare and <laughs> to tighten all that. So it's a complete opposite. That's why these cars cost so much to restore. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're particularly complicated, although they can be. But it's an issue of time. It's just an issue of, of time. It's just so much, that it's so labor intensive. I mean, this is just holding a water jacket. Look, you have, now you would have maybe four or five nuts and bolts and some kind of modern high-tech bonding material to hold the plate on and there. And this is every inch spanning about four feet. Yeah, yeah. See, Bentley was a locomotive engineer. So these are big, heavy, bulletproof cars that have sort of almost, well, they look locomotive. They when, do. When you look and these at were... Very fast. I mean, these are capable of over 100 miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, this is well over 100 mile an hour sedan. And even the way the overhead cam drive works, most cars have a chain or a belt. This has a, like con rods, like a train. So and it really you, is low. And if you put it this way, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a train, and it runs the, runs the overhead cam off, off the And this probably shaft. weighs 7,000 plus? Uh, no, maybe not 7,000. Maybe it's a little closer to uh, a six. Oh, so it's a, a light body. A little closer to a six. Huh? And this is what you don't see much of anymore. This is what they call an auto vac. Are you familiar with these? Mm -mm. Well, see, this is what everybody does. They put modern electric fuel pumps in. But this is a vacuum type device. And what, it holds about a, what's that, about a quarter, maybe a quarter and a half 
half a gallon of fuel in here. And as you drive, there's a vacuum pump that pss, pss, keeps putting a couple of dollops of gasoline in this. So, so it's really kind of a reservoir. You don't yeah, drain so, down, you right, start so, up, you don't pump, pump, pump. Right. So you have a gravity feed to the carburetors Ooh. from here. That's cool. So there's no electric pump. In. I like that. Yeah. Now, this, this is a boat over here. I mean, it actually, it actually even looks like a boat. <laughs> yeah, this car came out of the, it was in the Harris collection. That's what I love about Bill Harris. He saved a lot of great cars. Um, Crane Simplex. Crane Simplex. Yeah. Holbrook built the body. Crane, well, what, what they tried to do there, I think it was Harry Crane, I think it was his name. Uh, he tried to make an American sort of Rolls Royce, and these were very staid, conservative cars, with Holbrook bodies, big limousine bodies on them. And this was, was built for, oh, a guy that had something to do with one of the yacht clubs. So he, he had it done as a boat. I mean, you even get, enter it yeah, I mean, it looks would. It looks ocean going. I a got boat. It. I got it. <laughs> and you got flip up seats here. And, and they, they pipe again, you aboard, do they? Yeah, yeah. And you got, well, look at the dashboard. The dashboard is very oh, yeah. nautical. And even though you got a propeller in the back, and no leg room, not a problem. No, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Could really stretch out in that baby. Yeah, because you got your oh yeah, a little bit of whimsy. Oh, <laughs> good chair. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of fun. Now this here is a Duesenberg chassis, and this is really what you bought when you bought a Duesenberg. Well, yeah, this is this is a 1929 Duesenberg chassis, which runs fine. I, it's perfectly drivable. I drive it on the street. That's why it has these covers on the headlamps to mm -hmm. protect against stones from the tires being blown up. But what they would do is they would build this chassis, then they'd take it out of the Indianapolis track and you know drive it, you know, at 100 miles an hour, whatever it was. Yeah, yes. and, and then okay, when they deemed it was fine, then they would put a body on it. But this is basically what you got for your $8,500, and then you put a body on top of this. When you realize a Ford for about 800 or so. No, no. Let me see. But yeah, but no, by 29 the Fords were 260. Oh. Well, the last Model T was 266, something yeah. like that. So, you know, this was a lot of money. This was a house. But, and and they would send it, you would send this out to any number of custom coach builders to right, have it. Right. Right. I mean, the factory bodied an awful lot of them, most of them. But Murphy and, and, and uh, LeBaron, mm -hmm. whoever. But you got twin cam, four valve, 265 horse, when most cars. Yeah, it really didn't it was a dual, dual overhead cam. 32 valve car. I mean, that was right. I mean, right. That's, that's way, way ahead of its time. Yeah, I mean, it was ahead of its time up until the, for American cars, the, what, the 80s? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, some of these were even supercharged. Right. I've got a supercharged SJ. It's not here right now. We just got it out and uh, redoing the supercharger. But even normally aspirated, they were supposedly capable of about 90 in second gear, 120 in yeah, third? Yeah, well, it's not posted there. 88 in second, 116 wow. in top. Dun, 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 dun. Now this. You remember that? There was an ad that used to run in, uh, when I was a kid for the Comet. A hundred thousand miles at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> and then the guy would come on and <laughs> <It's> like, say, <laughs> the hum was the best part. When I was 14, they used to have that ad. They'd show the Comet going, I think it was Daytona. A hundred thousand miles at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> and then the big hum, the big hum. Oh, you got to hear the hum. And that was the little Comet with the 289. And oh, I love those ads. I love those ads. I love great those car. Ads. Great, great yeah. engine, too. Oh, God, yeah. But now this is, is really a one-of-a-kind. Yeah, I mean, this is another one-of-a-kind uh, Duesenberg. I mean, Duesenbergs are pretty rare to begin with, but this is even a rare Duesenberg. This is the only one they built like this. Uh, they did a big story for Automobile Quarterly on it. This is a 1934 aerodynamic coupe. It was built, uh, Herbert Newport designed it, Walker built it, which was, uh, it was built essentially by the factory. You got some um, cord look to it, a little bit. Yeah, it looks look. a little bit like a cord. When you realize that that Duesenberg and these Duesenberg are basically the same era, you realize just how aerodynamic this is. I mean, it's a bit, I mean, what's the word? Ergonomically, it's ridiculous. There's no room in it. <laughs> Ergonomically ridiculous. I mean, when you look at these door four hinges, four hinges, and it just sort of, I mean, I have these mirrors stuck on here just so I can see what you, you can't see out of it. Right. I mean, there's absolutely no room in it. But this is, this, it really, it really shuts like a door. Ooh. You have that double click, click, click. Yeah. Yeah, this one here is a Beverly, Murphy Beverly sedan. This is for the owner, for the chauffeur driver. This is for the guy who liked to be driven, but also liked to drive himself. And you had two dashboards, front and mm -hmm. back. Oh, I, I'm sorry, it's all messy in there. But. 
I didn't know you guys were coming today. <laughs> so your, radio, your radio is in there. So there. But everything here is registered. Everything here is on the road. It's, these aren't trailer queens. They get driven a lot. Not a lot of people do that. Huh? Not a lot of people do that. Well, they're fun to drive. You oh, know, you really be. can't appreciate what it is until oh. you drive them, yeah. Oh, and one in blue. How nice. This was the first Duesenberg I ever got. I think there are, there were seven of these built. I think there are five remain. Lots of what they call the barren barrel side. This is a 1930 Duesenberg. Actually, you know, all Duesenbergs were built in 1929. It just took 10 years to sell them. They did 500 <laughs> and some odd chassis. And they weren't, they weren't actually dated until they were sold and bought. Until they were right? sold. Yeah, that was different. I mean, this whole idea of cars coming out every year. They really didn't do it that. They didn't do that. It's like the Packards were the 903, the 90, whenever they had a new series, they introduced it. And then there was a lot of pressure with, I think it was Sloan and General Motors. Oh, let's do every year and yeah, all yeah. that kind of thing, you know, which has sort of disappeared too. I mean, yeah. I, as a kid, I remember uh, I was there April 17th. 1964 at the Ford dealership with my nose pressed against the glass waiting for the Mustang. Mustang. You know? And then the, then the salesman <laughs> took the curtain down. Ooh, ah, you know, all that kind of, here's your donut, here's your hot dog, you know, you got all, you know, all that kind of, they don't do that anymore. I, that. I do miss it. But anyway, this is, I mean, this is an everyday car. Um, Dual call Phaeton. Yeah, all the Duesenbergs I brought to Pebble Beach just to get them some history so you can go. You know, over the years, so many things get changed, so many things get moved around. So when you take a car to Pebble, the historians come and they go, yeah, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct. So you go, ah, now, you, you know, it's like a pedigreed dog. Right. Know, the mother's Lassie, the father's Rin Tin Tin. Okay, <laughs> fine. So, you know, this puppy is going to be okay. Now, but, this was a, uh, what did you say? This was a LeBaron bodied Le LeBaron barrel side. Yeah, I got this out of a barn where it's been, it's been sitting since 1951. Looks better now, probably? Yeah, it looked yeah. pretty good when I got it, really? though. But you know the thing about Duesenbergs? Duesenbergs, even when they weren't worth anything, they were still worth more than anything else. Even during all the scrap drives, I think 475, 480, something like that, I'm not the expert, Duesenbergs were built and 375 remained. So mm -hmm. just people knew to save them. You know, I mean, they just, it was never it was too special. an, an old junky car. I mean, you when, could even feel how special When junky it was. cars were $50, these were $1,500, yeah. wow. you know. Uh, this Duesenberg to me was the first old car that ever cost more than a new car. You know, in the old days, people go, you know, you could get a new Cadillac for that. Yeah, for, for. I mean, when, I, when my dad and I would go look at old cars when I was a teenager, my dad would go, you know, you could buy a new Cadillac for that. Duesenberg was the first car. Why would you pay more for an old car than a brand new car? This, well, to me, at least, in, in my memory, they it's were. It's a Duesenberg. That's right. Well, here, hop in. We'll go for a ride. <laughs> well, there, there's an idea. There you go. I'm afraid to even touch it, Jay. Ah, ooh, feels so nice. There you are. Oh. Well, they're cozy too, aren't they? Let me set the let me set your clock. Power steering was not one of the options. Armstrong. Yeah. Armstrong. Power steering by Armstrong. That's a good man. It's a three speed, right? Yeah. D double clutch, even on the upshift. Oh, not bad. Takes a long time to warm up. Duesenberg's never ever overheat. You know, he was a cooling and lubrication engineer. So they always ran cool. It comes with an altimeter. Yeah. Why? Well, you know, when you look at what was going on in 29, you know, things you sort of reflect the society you live in. Um, I'm trying to think what the equivalent would be. Lindbergh had just flown the ocean. So everybody wanted aircraft technology, aircraft style. Aircraft styles. was in. Even when you look at the Bugatti with the riveted body, that yes. was, ooh, look, aircraft fuselage technology. Uh, you know, I saw a Humphrey Bogart movie the other night where he, he, he bought a new uh, 36 Ford and he goes, look at that dashboard, strictly airplane type, strictly airplane type, because that's how you impress people. Right. I mean, what was faster than an airplane? You're flying over the ocean, yep. you're flying to different countries, so you give the impression that your car, you know. Duesenberg also had, you familiar with these? No, what are those? 
Uh, maybe it'll come on and we'll get lucky. But these are lights. Uh, one is battery, chassis, chassis lube. Oh, okay. So did it come on when it did? When yeah. it did it? And it did right. about every eighty every, miles. Every or eighty miles, and then the plunger would drop and lubricate. And then you got battery, and then you got water. Now these had. This was really one of the first cars, if not the first, with four-wheel hydraulic brakes. Right. First American car, certainly first car with four-wheel hydraulic brakes. And, and I see a, a, a brake. Is that the yeah, hydraulic that, pressure? That or? gauge is a little bit off. It should go to zero. I've got to fix oh, okay. that gauge. But again, you're dealing with people who go, at the time, you know, they had just convinced people to get four-wheel brakes. Because people just think, oh, four, you're going to go over there. You're going to go through the windshield. They're going to fly over there. So all of a sudden, telling people, look, instead of a steel rod pulling a cable, we're gonna put a fluid in here under pressure, and it's like I got something better here, right? <laughs> yeah. So you had that gauge to show me how many pounds of pressure. People are very conservative. It takes them a long time to try a new idea. Like Franklin, you know, Franklin had to put a radiator on the front of their car because it was an air-cooled car, but they had to put a radiator on the front. Because people just weren't really because people that. thought, oh, a radiator is impressive. The bigger the radiator, the fancier the car. Okay, we'll get her up to speed. He even had a tack in 2029. Yeah, yeah, all Duesenbergs had a tack. You know, Fred, do, Fred and Augie were uh, race car guys. Yeah. At bicycle racers originally, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they both had the middle name Samuel, isn't that it? Huh? They both had the middle name Samuel. I guess that's right. Fred Samuel and Augie Samuel. Yeah. Samuel might have been a middle name, it might have been a last name, like Muir. Ah, you know? uh, yeah. My middle name is Muir. We're caught in traffic, Dad. We're stuck in traffic? Yeah. Pity. <laughs> it's not our problem. The great thing about a Duesenberg, it's one of the few cars you can drive as a modern car and don't have to apologize. <laughs> you don't have to stay in the slow lane, you know, and excuse me, go ahead, you know, do all of that nonsense. It's more like, get out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming. Man. When you realize we're ready, we're going faster than any Model T could, you know? Just pull on the freeway. You could take a T on the freeway. <laughs> Not with me, you won't. <laughs> now, when did your fascination with Duesenbergs actually start? I mean, you're a car guy. Oh, as a kid. Really? You know, this is the car that was all, you know, the Ralph Stein books and. This was always the greatest American, you know, the mightiest motor car, the Albert Walker. I mean, you realize you got solid axles front and back and you got a pretty good ride. I mean, we're doing 70. Even a mid-60s 
Cadillac or Buick, the hood's going like it, that. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a Studi Hawk, GT Hawk. The whole front end, fenders in oh, all yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a 57, huh? Was that 57? Uh, GT was 62 through 64. Oh, oh. It was the, the Studebaker, yeah, I, thought, I think it Packard Hawk. Yeah, the Packard Hawk, that was actually 58. Yeah, the one yeah. year they did That's that. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the, the GT was the Brooks Stevens body. Really a real pretty car. To me, the, the prettiest one was the first year, the 52 Commander. Oh, gosh. That, I mean, clean line. And then they had they felt they had to go with the fins and everything. That was the most beautiful car, I think, in America in oh, yeah, 53. Yeah. I guess that was actually Bob Burke. On a Ferrari or Porsche, you should get the finger. <laughs> you know, Nobody you... gives you the finger to do no, the no. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's such elegance and such grace. It's yeah, just they're, beautiful. They're great. The guy's slowing us up here. Let's get him out of the way. center of gravity, doesn't it? Not as bad as you might think. dropping almost a ton. I saw one in Randy's shop. The my just, chassis, that one there. Yeah, yeah. I could not believe. Oh, yeah. Well, he had a Dusen, he had, he had your Stutz chassis, but he also had a Duesenberg chassis yeah. there. I couldn't believe how big it was. Yeah, yeah. But it's great when you take that in the freeway because you lose a ton of weight, literally a ton of weight. <laughs> yourself pulling up on cars all the time. <laughs> Small one like that, they you gotta lose you. you couldn't even see it if you got too close over this hood. The best one I don't have here, that's a supercharged Murphy convertible. Oh, two-seater convertible, that's the best. That's the greatest car there is. 320 horse. Oh man. Original mileage, by the way. 
That's total mileage. Would these have been little, are these dash lights? Dash lights. Because the gauges aren't illuminated from no. the back? You know, this car was built in the 20s. Now by the 30s, everybody else was catching up pretty quick. And Duesenberg did what they had to do to, you know, they put the disc wheels on and, yeah. you know, the wheel covers and, you know, Packard had recessed lighting and synchro mesh. What Duesenberg had was a great engine and a great chassis. Next exit. But it sounds like an airplane. And it's a uh, Model A. Coupe. Some old guy driving. So on I get this behind road. Him, on this road. And I go, ee, ee. I just <laughs> lean on the horn. He's going, because he's not looking behind. He goes, go around it, go around it. <laughs> ee, ee, you know? So I pull up behind him and I go, hey, get that piece of crap off the road. And the guy goes, ee. and it's just like something from the 30s, you know, Model A being passed by a Duesenberg. <laughs> I like to do at least 15 miles. I don't like to put the... Another big mistake guys make in these cars is they, they run multi-grades. Oh, versus a uh, straight grade oil, you mean? Yeah. You gotta, you can't run it. Like a 2050, you know, people tell you, oh, when it heats up, it gets to 50. But it doesn't heat up. That's the idea behind this so car. It's 20 so you're all always the time. running 230. Unless it's, you know, you're driving to San Francisco on a 90 degree day, it's never gonna become a 50 weight oil. Switch up here. <laughs> we'll let Dennis drive. A modern day car. Are we still on tape? Yeah. You know, the sad thing about them, American car, when you go to England, they're still making crankcases, everything for Bentleys. Yeah. Because guys drive them, blow them up, drive them. Most Duesenbergs just sit on the shelf. The technology's forgotten, all the parts are used up. The guys that know how to fix them go broke because nobody breaks them. Well, I see you're doing your part, though. Oh, I break them all the time. <laughs> That's my job. That's my job. Yeah. It 
is a hold on to your hat type car. Yeah. Well, the guy could use to this. An old car can't be as dependable as a new car. There's really no reason at all. You can even feel the craftsmanship and the engineering in this car, though. It's, it just it's through the whole thing. Yeah, you can turn around the next one. Next exit. Look like it being passed in a Duesenberg. It's like, come Jay on. says he doesn't like being passed in a Duesenberg. It looks bad. Pick it up, pick it up. It looks bad. Now, were there even four speed transmissions back then, or was huh? three the standard? All Duesenbergs originally came with four speed. Oh, did they? But they weren't strong enough. They all broke. So they went to this Auburn transmission, which is, I believe it's Auburn. Randy would know a little bit better. Well, that's funny because. A variation of a truck transmission. The one other car of this vintage, I drove a. 29 boat tail speedster. Right. Auburn, and it shifted exactly the same way. Right, right. But again, you gotta look at the time. In those days, when you went in to buy with a car, they would say to a guy, how many speeds in your car? Four. This car only needs three to do the same thing. You know, people didn't want to work hard. In What's fact, Fred Duesenberg, Fred and Augie were working on an automatic transmission before he died. But the idea that a car could do in three what most cars needed to do four, well, that was a plus. You get one pound of oil pressure for every mile per hour. The speedometer breaks. Look at your oil gauge. <laughs> you work awful hard, but you got to be having fun. Oh, I have a great with time. With these toys. Oh, yeah, this is all I do. This is a nice kind of view. People passing us. How bad is that? Got passed by a Chevy. What's that all about? <laughs> so have you fully adapted to California? Oh, I love it here. Do you? you? Can't pay me to go anywhere else. Okay. Oh yeah, I love living out here. Oh, Jay. Beautiful. That's about it. <laughs> not only, not only riding in it, but driving it. It's just too cool. Thanks, man. Look what he did to his mustache. <laughs> yeah. He's Hollywood types. <laughs> How am I cut? Yeah, I think so. That's pretty much your, your basic doozy story there. Duesenberg story. Let me go put on some steam clothes. <laughs>